Hi everyone! My name is Beth Twist and you have reached the Heartstring Samplery Floss Tube channel where I talk about cross stitch. And that's pretty much all. Today is November 29th, 2019 and it is Black Friday and that's why I'm at home in a sweatshirt and sweatpants and relaxing because yesterday was the big American Thanksgiving holiday and we traveled to be with my dad's side of the family about a two hour drive north up into Washington State and this morning I got up when I felt like it and I went to the gym and I came straight home. I did not even get myself coffee in town because I am that against interacting with crowds on Black Friday. Count me out. Today, or this is, I believe, floss tube number 23. If I'm wrong, then of course the words right now are flashing across my face saying what actual video it is. I don't know why it really matters. I guess because it's an accomplishment? I don't know. I film about once a month, sometimes once every three months, sometimes twice a month, as in this case. I'm back a little sooner than usual because I am trying to give myself a December as free from activities as possible. And you know how hard that can be. My son's birthday is December 17th and I always want that to be special. And so it adds a layer of events into the middle of the month. And so all of the extra Christmas I don't know, extra stuff that we get invited to, we pick and choose and try to keep it as simple as possible. And that includes work, but I'll talk more about that later. I don't have Q&A today. I know it's a brand new feature. And so being a brand new feature and skipping it on a video is probably a brilliant idea. But um, I went back through comments on my last video and there were just a couple of questions and they were recently asked and answered in previous videos, close at least. And so I just answered those people individually and chose not to um, do the Q&A on my video. But that feature will be back next month as long as you all ask me questions. You can ask me questions about anything. The worst thing I can do is decide that I don't want to answer your question live and I'll answer it in text. So no question is off limits, I guess. Um, I did not have a video announcing my most recent release, so I'll talk about it now. That was, is, the Pins and Orts design can see that. I don't have the model. It is currently on tour and hopefully will be home soon because it's been gone since September and I'd like to have it back but some of you may have seen it in person in recent months. This was originally designed for Salty Yarns which is in Ocean City, Maryland. September of 2018 I was there for their jamboree was one of three teachers and got to teach this it's basically a little padded pincushion lid that fits on a tin these tins are still available at Hobby Lobby and you'll find links below to the pattern and the tin if you want to make this design it also comes with the pattern for the little strawberry that matches it and it's a fun project, kind of quick. It's a little, a little more stitching than it looks like. It's on 40 count linen in order to fit this tin. You are more than welcome to stitch it on a lower count linen, but you will need to find a different round container for it to fit on top of because you'll need something that's a little bigger. And that would be equally amazing and I'd love to see it if somebody does it let me know send me pictures I think that's about all I have to say about that it's uh, I also did teach it at the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild in May of this year 
So there have been two groups that have had the opportunity to learn the putting together of this project from me, and it was a lot of fun. I'd love to do something like that again. Most of the time when I go to events and retreats, we're not finishing there. We're just talking about the brand new project that they get and what it, what inspired me to design it and that sort of thing. Most people don't want to do pre-stitching and finishing in class in my experience, but I keep offering it. If that's something you want, talk to somebody you know who organizes events and say, hey, let's do a finishing class with Beth Twist and then have them contact me. My 2020 calendar is completely booked, not taking any more opportunities next year. I've already signed up for one or two more things than I ultimately, well, this sounds wrong, that I ultimately wanted to in theory because I want to, I don't want to be gone from home a lot. But having said that, it's only, I'm only going to be gone, I think I have six trips planned for next year, so that's really not that bad. I mean, they're, I'm typically gone for five days each time, and my kids are older, and they, they get to eat things when I'm gone that they don't normally eat when I'm here because daddy indulges them and they have a great time. So, and they watch movies without me and I get home and I say, why did you watch that without me? I wanted to see that with you and oh well. I suppose I probably do the same thing when my husband's gone on trips, business, so. Um, what's next? Oh, I also, uh, this month came out with a free chart for everybody. I, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I think I like it even better than Christmas. There's a lot that I love about Christmas, don't get me wrong, but I love the simplicity of Thanksgiving. It's, it's just, it's, this simple holiday, there's not a lot of fanfare leading up to it. There's not a lot of, there's no sense of obligation to this, that, and the other thing. And you know what I mean? I, it's just about being thankful. And so in recent history, I have come out with free charts that are Thanksgiving themed. Now this one says, thankful every day because of course I want to give emphasis to the fact that thankfulness doesn't have to be just one time of the year. I um, sort of modified one of my early designs from when I first started from this, I think dates back to 2008, it was called, oh, I should have grabbed the cover to show you. Um, anyway, it's a basket with three sprigs of strawberries coming out of it. And I changed it into pumpkins, and I have my three favorite kinds, Cinderella pumpkins, which are fairy tale pumpkins, sometimes called kind of a reddish color. And then we have pie pumpkins, because pumpkin pie. And then we have boo pumpkins, or Casper pumpkins, because they're white and they look ghostly. So it's, this is 32 count, which made it a nice big pin cushion. It's, I filled it with sheep's wool, so it's got just this nice feel to it. And then on the back, I have this batik fabric I found a few years ago that just looks like a bunch of X's. And it was the perfect coloring, I thought, for fall. This is um, Smashing Jack 32 Count by Dames of the Needle. And it was, it's such a nice orange, it's perfect for this design. Anyway, that's a free chart, no strings attached. Share it as much as you want, and link is below. I don't have any more standard releases for the rest of the year. Because I'm giving myself a break. I do have another release, but it's going to be a different, it's, it's a new thing that I've never done before, and I'll explain it to you in a little while, so stick around. Oh. What am I all into these days? I'm all into these earrings. They're vintage sterling silver chime balls. Can you hear that? Every time I move my head, there's just this gentle little chiming sound. It makes me happy. 
I apparently am all into dropping needle packets out of my purse in public places because they're in the pocket with my keys and I pull my keys out and the needle packets fall out. Finally, I got the needle packet out of my purse, so I won't do that very often, but it was comical for a while how many times I dropped those needles on the floor. I am all into thinking about future Beth. I was listening to a podcast, which is another thing I'm all into, the Brant and Sherry Oddcast, and Brant was talking about... Uh... What does he call it? I don't know. I'll put it, I'll put the words below because I'll figure it out by the time I edit and upload this. So often when we make decisions in the here and now, whether impulse decisions or something we think about a day or two in advance, we make those decisions based on how we currently feel. And so something like, oh, I'll just have an extra large piece of cheesecake because it tastes so good and it's creamy and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you make that decision, you're actually loving your current self more than your future self. I was like, that's actually very profound. So lately I have been all into thinking about future Beth. What would Beth in two days or in two hours or in two months or two years think about this whatever decision that I'm making right now to eat an extra piece of cheesecake or I, it applies to all aspects of life. It applies to the fact that I have now been faithfully going to the gym three days a week for two months. Have I lost any weight? No. I like to think it's because I'm replacing it with muscles. <laughs> At least my clothes aren't getting tighter like they were and I feel stronger and the endorphins are good and I'm investing in future Beth. So next time I see you, I might be able to beat you at arm wrestling even if I don't look any different from two months ago. It's okay, it's not about appearance, it's not about size, it's about am I in good condition for future Beth. Gotta do it now, I just turned 45, and granted, I know that's not old, but it's a lot harder to work out at 45 than it was at 25, which was the last time I had a gym membership. <laughs> it's not a piece of cake anymore, just saying. I'm all into mattress shopping. Haven't picked one yet. We have been sleeping on our Tempur-Pedic mattress for almost 15 years and sure enough they said they were good for 15 years and my husband's side of the mattress has gotten way too soft and his back is hurting so we must get a new one. I'm all into Nashville prep not going to give you any hints right now, more than I have already. I am all into Robert Frost, always been one of my favorite poets, and I just found this book at Costco, and I haven't actually read anything out of it yet. I only got it last week, but I keep looking at it, and it's such a pretty color, my favorite color of blue, and it's Robert Frost, and I am going to spend time in December when I'm not working so much, more about that later, reading some Robert Frost. So maybe I'm not all into it yet. I'm all into thinking about Robert Frost. I am all into this pipe cleaner bee that my young friend made for me for my birthday. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest thing ever? It will be hanging in my car from the rearview mirror. Uh, starting probably tomorrow. I'm not going, it's like 25 degrees out there right now. I'm not going to go outside if I don't have to. One of my favorite birthday gifts ever. I'm also all into something that I don't have in front of me and that is the necklace that my kids bought for me. They picked it out from an Etsy seller 
and it has my birthstone in it and it's delightful. And finally, I've been thinking about something. I've been all into thinking about something and I would love your feedback. So I was looking around and I have seven or eight small antique samplers that I have not charted yet. And part of the reason I haven't charted them is they're not very big or complicated. And I guess I just, I've put some effort into some larger reproductions. Uh, one will come out later next year that I taught um, at the Sampler Guild in May. And I don't know, the simple ones, I, I love them dearly, but I haven't, I just haven't done anything with them yet. And I was thinking it might be fun to have a subscription, a sampler pattern subscription club of some kind. And I'm toying around with an every other month. And I'm toying around with the, I've never done anything like this before, which is why I have to think about it. Uh, with the idea of having two options, one being pattern only and one being pattern with kit. And so obviously there will have to be work that'll go into it to figure out what the pricing will be for those two options. But I think it might be fun. It seems like subscriptions are something that people enjoy, but you tell me, are you, do you have way too many subscriptions that you're receiving currently. Is there room for another one? And if so, is a sampler reproduction subscription club interesting to you? I think what I would do is it would be like the designs that I release in any clubs. It would be available only um, to people who subscribed and I would have to cut that I would probably give you like a month to sign up for the club and then cut it off. And only if somebody dropped out, then allow somebody from the waiting list in. Um, maybe, I don't know, I have to figure that part out. So it would be a full year before they were released to the public. And what I'm thinking is that because they're all smaller patterns, that maybe I would publish them in a book form. I've always wanted to do that never have. It would probably probably be a soft book, uh, similar to what uh, Blackbird Designs puts out with the collection of, well if I did it bi-monthly it would be six samplers would be in that book. And then I would release it maybe at market the following year and it would, you know, probably a limited number. Anyway, these are things I'm thinking of. I'm trying to look outside of the box of what I've always done. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think of that idea. If you would subscribe, um, what are your past experiences when you've subscribed to something? What do you look for in a subscription? It's a silly idea, Beth. Just release them like regular. Anything. Just let me know your thoughts. And that's what I'm all into this week, Teresa. Thanks for telling me I can sing your song. Let's see. I don't have a lot to talk about today. I think next what I'll talk about is uh, the fact that my mom yesterday gave me some project bags. Christmassy, one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. I think she made five and her friend made three. So there's not a lot of them. I'm going to list them in my Etsy shop probably tomorrow, but I thought I'd show them here. We have this one, which has a vintage Santa print with stockings and holly, kind of a green candy stripe. And then it's got a little little Santa Claus charm on it. We have gingerbread men and candy canes. 
These are all a standard size project bag that would fit, um, ah, there's a half size chart. So it would fit a full size chart that way. They do come with handles, something my mom likes to put on her bags. And also some of them have a little tab, like a little loop on the side that you could clip your, um, hook your scissors onto if you wanted or hang them. I don't know. You can also hang them here. Uh, this one, I don't know what I would call this, but it's a really pretty Christmassy fabric on the outside and candy canes and wreaths in there. And then there's a little wreath charm. Another one. There's two of this one. This one is more winter, not specifically Christmas, where it's gray snowflakes, trees. And then I have one that's got cardinals and green. So anyway, project bags, I know. You already have a million, but maybe you need a Christmas bag. And if so, there will be eight available in my Etsy shop by the end of this weekend. Um, pause this for a second. And speaking of my mom's project bags, I have to show you what she made for me for my birthday. Okay, so first I have to preface that by saying I bought the materials and I gave them to her and I said, you could make this project bag for me for my birthday. And we chuckled about it, and then I promptly forgot. So when I opened my birthday present from her yesterday, we, I had to laugh because I was like, I forgot about this. And she, she gave me something else, too. She's like, you bought all the materials. That couldn't be your only birthday present. But it's, it's long. It's extra long, which wasn't, you know, something necessary. But it's extra long because... I found this vintage cross stitch piece at a local antique store. It reminds me of, is it Kate Greenway? With this, these kids dancing around in a circle and it was just so sweet. My mom has been making Save Our Stitches bags and we'll continue to make them as I find them. But this one, this one was for me. So she, this was my made by my mama, chosen by me, um, birthday present. And I love it. So cute. Uh, what else did I get for my, well, this I didn't get for my, oh, what do we have here? Breaking animal news. Florida dog takes car for a spin. Max the dog was out on a drive with his owner when his owner made a wrong turn into a cul-de-sac. His owner stopped the car momentarily and got out, accidentally closing the door with Max still inside. Max hit the shifter, sending the car into reverse. Max and the car circled the dead end cul-de-sac for about an hour until the police arrived. The car was a 2003 Mercury Sable, which struck a mailbox during its hour of spinning donuts, with Max at the wheel. No injuries were reported, and the car sustained minor damage. Max was fine, healthy, and happy, the police said. Florida station WPBF spoke with a resident of the cul-de-sac, who described Max as a big black lab or something. Twitter user JP Drake Enterprises seems to have figured out why Max was driving backward. He stated, Most dogs just use their legs to chase their tails. This one uses a sedan. There's no word on whether or not Max caught his tail. Recently I was at an antique mall and I found this lovely thing. 
hanging on a wall. It's a fan, hand fan, Victorian-ish. It's on paper. It has, somebody has rejected wool work on the back and a showcase piece on the front of this lovely bird on perforated paper. Uh, the stitcher's name was originally at the bottom and I, I think it may have been Phoebe and it may have been Frost. Phoebe A. Frost. There was another one on the wall that had the last name Frost on it, but it wasn't nearly as appealing to me as this one, so I chose this one. I suppose I should have maybe bought the pair to keep them together, but uh, this you can expect at some point in the future of Heartstring Samplery to be charted and available for you to stitch it as well. Not necessarily on a punched paper hand fan. Isn't it beautiful? Those colors. So pretty. Kind of Christmassy too. And this amazing loveliness was a birthday gift from my sister-in-law who knows me very well. I now can follow one of the rules put forth by Brenda and the Serial Starter. Because I now own my very own red sampler. Kate Adkin made it. Don't know what year, but I'm guessing Kate was British because there are some crowns down here at the bottom. Isn't that the sweetest? So, also you can expect in the future, Kate Adkin. I keep looking at it. It has, um, it has a J in the uppercase alphabet, and the lowercase alphabet has the standard English S as well as kind of that old-fashioned thing that looks like an F that they used to use in place of an S, which makes me think that this is from the 1800s, but probably not as late as the middle of the 1800s. I'm guessing earlier because of when, oh, and there's no J in the cursive alphabet. So J was the last letter to be added to the standard English alphabet, which is why it's often missing from samplers. Uh, so I can have a somewhat educated guess as to when this was stitched, but if Kate put it on her original sampler, she at some point took it out, which also happened often because they didn't want people to know how old they were. I can relate to that. All right, um, haul. Well, that was kind of haul. That was the beginning of haul. I only have a couple other things to show you, so, because I, I didn't really do much shopping for myself in the last three weeks since we talked. But I did, on the same antique sh shopping trip, find this bag full of old measuring tapes, kind of papery measuring tapes, that I haven't opened yet, not for any particular reason. Other than that, I've been busy. But I was like, ooh, those would make nice props in for pho photography, for taking pictures of models. So it came home with me. At my kids, well, it's not their school anymore. The brick and mortar school that my kids went to five years ago has a annual craft bazaar. And I got a little business card wallet with a nice mustardy dandelion fabric. And it has little pockets inside for business cards. I have one the same exact, um, made from the same pattern that my mom made for me several years ago and it goes in my purse with me and then if somebody is like oh do you have a business card then I have it with me well I now have two purses 
handbags. Now, I'm not one of those fancy people that buys the name brand handbags. I have one that, two that I bought from Etsy. One is made out of a black leather coat that was formerly worn by a man. I like to say it's made from an old man's leather coat, but I, I have no way to prove that it was an old man that wore it. I just like to think it was an old man. You can see where the coat was patched in one place and it's worn and scuffed and I just love that. That's my black purse. And then my brown purse was made by a woman in England who makes leather purses. So the problem is when I on the spur of the moment on a morning decide I want to carry the brown purse instead of the black purse, I grab the essentials out of one and put them in the other. And I don't always manage to get things like business cards transferred and then inevitably somebody will say, oh, do you have a business card? And I'll say, oh, sorry, it's in my other purse, which is just dumb. I've always been a monogamous purse carrier. It's the first time in my life for the last couple years that I've had multiple handbags. And I haven't quite figured out how that works because then once I transfer to the black from the brown. I will often just carry the black one for a couple months before I switch back to the brown and that whole time my little pouch with the business cards will be in the other one. So that was a very long story but this lady was selling these for five dollars. How can you pass that up? So I will now never be without business cards unless I leave my purse somewhere. This Dimensions journal is new to me. I found it on Amazon. It's a 50 page journal, but it's a DIY stitchable journal because it's perforated chipboard on the front and I thought that that would be fun. They exist. You've probably already seen them. My final haul item I believe is this wooden round box with a lower section in the lid found at Ikea. It smells like freshly cut wood. It's just natural wood, unpainted, unstained, unsealed, which means there's a lot of scope for imagination as Anne of Green Gables would say. And so I am imagining designs to put in here, cross stitch. But then I was thinking how much I've been wanting to do some needle punching again. Haven't done it for several years. When I first started designing, I released two or three needle punch patterns and they didn't sell very well either because they were not good or because people only knew me for cross stitch and I wasn't crossing over into the punch needle world but my cross stitch designs did well enough that I just decided to set punch needle aside and I've been lately have just been itching to do some again. But is that too big for a punch needle piece? I know people do bigger ones all the time, but it seems ambitious to me. So I have some ideas for some punch needle designs. Should I tell you? I was thinking it would be fun to adapt my entire alphabet series into punch needle so it's available both ways as cross stitch and Needle punch. Punch needle, needle punch. I say it both ways. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And that leaves me with the final bit of news, I guess. So I've hinted that things will be different around here in December. And basically what that means is my Etsy shop is going to stay open, it's not gonna close, but at the end of the day, Friday, December 6th, everything is gonna be pulled from the Etsy shop. 
I don't I don't want to spend any more time beyond the first week of December filling shop orders. So if you have intentions of doing some Christmas shopping from my Etsy, then please get it done the first week of December. I find that shipping in December just gets sketchier and sketchier the closer you get to the holiday. And I don't want to run the risk of things getting lost or delayed if they're meant to be gifts. So for your sanity and for mine, I am not going to have anything left in the shop after the end of December 6th. That's a Friday. It'll be Pacific Coast time sometime around the end of the day. I'll just pull everything out. There will be something in there for you to buy. There will be one design. It will be brand new. It will be exclusively an instant download for the rest of the month and until after the new year when I reopen my Etsy. And at that point, it will be, that design will be gone. It will be taken away and it won't be released as a printed pattern until at least several months later. I can't remember when I decided I was gonna release it. And the reason I'm doing it this way is, one, it gets rid of the um, the risk of shipping times being messed up and things getting lost in the mail in the holiday rush. It's a really fun design that I think you're gonna really like that I stitched up in about a week. Now I stitch roughly two hours a day, so it's maybe in the range of 15 to 20 hours of stitching to finish this design. It's not real big. Uh, and then the other layer of information for this design is that it is going to be, uh, the proceeds are going to be donated to a friend's charity. Uh, we have a friend named Adam and he has a charity called Outgrowing Hunger and it's, uh, it's a local charity in specifically in East Portland area and it's community gardens and when he started he was sourcing abandoned lots and ground that maybe the city was willing to donate for the cause and he works primarily with um, immigrants from other countries and I asked him one time how many countries were represented and he started naming them off and he's got people from just about every continent of the globe that have immigrated for one reason or another that live in our area and appreciate having somewhere that they can grow the fruits and vegetables from home and it's he says he's learned about all kinds of interesting vegetables that he never knew about. So he's not planting or doing any of that. He's providing the ground and then he goes out and works with these people and gets to talk to them and they're just so thankful for a place to grow their food. And uh, he said that this time of year, uh, the people that pretty much are left still gardening are generally from um, Russia, the Soviet Union, from northern climates because they know how to grow things when it's colder. I thought that was interesting. Anyway, it's a it's a nonprofit, and I thought, what a fun, what a fun thing to do, to release a chart for a limited time. Now, like I said, it, it's an instant download. It will be released as a printed chart. At some point in the future and at that time it'll just be a regular release like all of my others it's not going to be for the nonprofit at that point so this window of time from December 6th at the end of the day until after the new year it'll be about a month's period of time it's going to be um, I will cover my listing and PayPal fees and the rest will be donated to um, outgrowing hunger. Do you want to see it? 
I went out of my usual. I stitched on colored fabric. Okay, maybe you can't see that very well. It's supposed to look a little bit like a lace handkerchief. Um, and it says, whip it good. Now, if you lived through the 80s, I think you recognize the term whip it good. But of course, I turned it into WIP for work in progress. And I have things like spools of thread and little hoops with stitching and there's scissors, little needles here. Anyway, this design, Whip It Good, could be stitched on any color of fabric with any color of threads. It's meant to be easy, no switching up of colors, although I think it'd be super cool if somebody decided to incorporate color into there. Use green for the leaves and red for the berries, or... It's just meant to be fun, playful, lighthearted, but also for a really good cause. So watch for this. This is not available yet as a download, as printed. So don't ask. December 6th, at the end of the day, Pacific Coast time, it will be available as an instant download only. And then when my shop opens up the beginning of January, it may be the end of the first week of January. I'm trying to remember what the calendar looks like. It'll be after the new year. Um, this will be removed and will not appear again for a period of time. So I hope you like it. I will probably put out another video announcing when it's available, but I just wanted to give you a preview. And that is about all I have for you today. Now I have to put all of this stuff away and do some cleaning of my house because Thanksgiving is over and that means the Christmas police have left my house. Christmas decorating can commence. And I have a daughter who's anxious to set up the nativity. And I have some new warm LED Christmas lights that I'm anxious to try. And it's pizza night, so I don't have to cook. So today is going to be about clearing off mantles and such so that tomorrow the foo-foo stuff can go out for Christmas. I don't... I am not a seasonal decorator, people. Some of you are, and you do beautiful things with your homes for every season, and I love the pictures that you post. And I just, I don't have it in me. My house pretty much stays the same, except at Christmas time. And that's just the way it is. And I'm okay with it, because... It's just extra time I don't have, I think. Or if I have the extra time, I'd rather spend it doing other things. Also, there's a storage space issue. Where do you keep all of your holiday decorations? You must have attics and big closets and maybe garages where you keep your holiday decorations. I don't, it's a mystery to me. I don't have that here. I suppose... I could put things out in the barn in a place where it's not drippy, but then you're a big bird flying by. <laughs> I said that and I pictured big bird flying by. Big bird doesn't know how to fly. His wings, I think, were clipped. Anyway, so doing Christmas decorating is a big deal. And that's all I have to say about that. I think that's how all I have to say about anything. I plan to be back soon and maybe I will do a quick video tour of the Christmas decorating that we have done. That would be fun because usually my house is nice and clean when I decorate. <laughs> Not that
that my house is a disaster, but you know, we live in it. There's four of us and we're here all the time. And so my house is never perfect and I have gotten used to that in the last almost 14 years since babies were born and I'm okay with it. Someday my house will be quieter and less occupied by bodies and it will be a little more sad and empty. It will be clean, but it won't be as full. So I'm just enjoying the season of life that I'm in. Anyway, that's really, that's it. I hope you're well and looking forward to the holiday season. I know it's not always easy for everyone and I just encourage you um, share joy with everyone around you because you never know what they are enduring on any given day. Until next time, happy stitching!